Hello makers, I'm Joe the 3D Maker No Ben. Today I want to give you a non-review of a couple of kits that I have in front of me right here. These are the Tronc C or Tron XY X3 and X3S kits. Both of these printers or kits were sent to me by Gearbus in order for me to do an unbiased review. Now I've had these for quite a few months and I never did the review of these printers and today I want to explain why. About four or five months ago, I received the X3 kit, which I put together, it was an absolute nightmare because all the screws were all in one bag, so I had to separate everything. The instructions were incomplete. It was an absolute nightmare to put the X axes together because it just needed constant tweaking to the, due to the amount of parts that actually go together to hold it in place. So after I initially assembled it and kind of got it working, I actually did a few test prints, which surprisingly, even though it does not have a part cooling fan, turned out pretty great. They're not perfect, but the fact that they came out this good means that the machine does have potential. It just needs a bit too much work to get it there. Now, due to the backlog of printers that I have to review and projects that I had to make, I ended up putting this on the back burner for a while. However, in the meantime, Gearbox decided to send me the X3S kit right here. This is pretty much almost a carbon copy of the X3, but it's just enlarged with a few differences. While the X3 has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 300, this has a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400. Basically, this is trying really hard and unsuccessfully to go the CR10 way. Now, the assembly of this was actually more of a nightmare than it was for this. And the reason was that apart from the usual incomplete documentation or the incomplete instructions, the missing screws, those massive tweaks that I had to do for this are actually amplified on this due to the much larger scale. So if you do a mistake on this, it will show on a print, but if you mistake, do the same mistake on this, it will show much more due to its size. Now this had even more problems um, than uh, the original X3. And that is because when Tronxy decided to do the skit, um, they kind of used the same wiring for this, but all they did was splice some wires together to actually make them longer. And I had both thermistors and one of the fan actually had splicing done incorrectly so there was no connection so i had to redo those myself after putting it together i did print um a holder for a part cooling fan which i installed myself uh, because i thought maybe that will make my experience a bit better after i printed that i decided to print this model of uh, fantasy graph which is the faceless model and it turned out okay it, not entirely bad not exceptionally good but okay with some tweaks it could be quite a machine. However, what happened was that I had moved it from here onto the shelf behind me and a few days later, I decided, okay, let me start the review process. I put it on the table and I wanted to print something in PETG. So I put in the settings and the bed temperature was set to 80 degrees. However, after one hour and 15 minutes, the bed temperature was still at 76 degrees. It just would not heat up any further than that. So what I ended up doing was simply reduce the print, uh, reduce the temperature for the heat bed and try to print. Lo and behold, what happened was that as soon as I moved this printer from the shelf and then put it back, it completely lost alignment. So I couldn't print anything else. And by that point, I was so frustrated, I just put it on the shelf and left it there for a few weeks. After that time has passed, I decided, okay, let me try once again. So I got it on the table to sort of align it again. But then I noticed something that in order for me to tune this printer up and calibrate it properly and make sure that everything's assembled properly, I have to take it apart once again. I'll, I'll give you a very small example about it behind the engineering of how this was done. Now you have two lead screws and these lead screws are obviously attached to the stepper motor which are attached by a bracket that goes into the uh, v-slot aluminum frame now the way that those are done are that first you have to attach the bracket but in order to do so you have to make sure that it's in the right position in order to tighten the bolts properly however once you attach the um, the lead screws with the stepper motor 
you can't really fine tune it any further because the screws are actually underneath the uh, stepper motor. So you either have to do one or the other uh, from the get-go. So in order for me to tune this, I have to take everything apart again. And then once I put it back together, if something is incorrect, I have to take it back apart, fix that little issue with the bracket and then put it back on. And to give you this, uh, like to give you an example of how frustrating this was for me, this was not done properly by myself, okay? because the screw came undone that hold the bracket of the stepper motor. And as you can see, this moves the whole lead screw. Now, in order for me to tighten those and find the right position, I have to take off the uh, stepper motor and the lead screw, and then I have to tighten it and I have to put it back on. I have to see if it's aligned properly. Then I have to tighten it again. Now, just because these two kits were a nightmare for me, it doesn't mean they're for everyone else. Yes, if these were possibly my two only printers, I would have put more time, more effort. But to be completely honest, for me, is is just an absolute hassle, which is why I decided that I, I really don't want to spend any more time with them and it, therefore I just won't make a full review of them. However, I do have some thoughts based on the kit. Now, as a printer itself, if I can get it to print like this on both, then I'd say this is a very decent printer. Um, it, it can actually print very well with some time, um, some care and a lot, a lot of effort. You can actually get it to print incredibly well. However, as a kit, as a 3D printer kit, I, I feel they're possibly two of the worst kits I've ever put together. I, there is a third kit which I believe is possibly a bit worse than this as a kit, not as a printer, as a kit, and that is the Tivo Tarantula, um, because it's just sitting right there and I just don't want to spend any more time and effort trying to put a kit together which just doesn't work right off the bat. And that is what frustrates me out of all of this. There are so many things so many little things wrong with such kits. It just makes me angry that companies put these kits out there which are half-baked and then they expect or want the community to pick up the slack because yes, there is a great community behind them, lots of things you can print and upgrade. How many of those things are actually done by the company itself. No, they leave it to the community to fend for themselves and that upsets me. Now, apart from those, there are things which, as you can see, wires are all over the place and that is the kind of design of this thing. So you have the extruder on one end but the control box on the other. So you have a wire which goes from the control box to the extruder but then has to go back and you have the the PTFE tube that just crosses all the way through rather than have everything neatly done on one side. Maybe it's done to balance things out but I definitely think this could have had a much better design for both of them. As a price, okay, fair enough. It's 160 euros, I think, for this and about 200 or something euros for the X3S. Okay, not too expensive. Now, I do believe that Tronxy or TronXY kind of realized their mistake with this machine right here because very recently they released a TronXY X3S upgraded, which is pretty much a spitting image of a CR10. So that's just yet another company trying to jump on the CR10 bandwagon. Now, I do believe that some of you or many of you have TronXY kits, and I understand that there is a budget that some people may have, or many people may have, and they don't want to spend that much. Personally speaking, I think for the money that these cost, you are better off spending them on something else, or maybe wait a bit, get some more money and buy a better kit because at this day and age, um, with all the advancement in the 3D printing community or the industry, I think these types of kits should possibly stop being produced. And if they are going to be produced, they have to be better kits. They have to have much more options. They have to have much better instructions. They definitely need to have all the parts in order to put this thing together. And once you assemble it according to the instructions, I truly believe that you should have a fully working printer. And from there onwards, you simply would upgrade it and not fix the mistakes that a company made in the first place. Now, I apologize if this is coming across as a rant. It's not, 
and it is, as I said, as a printer, it prints well. And if a printer prints well, then it's doing its job. But at what cost? What is the cost of the community or the person who buys it, the frustration? And I don't think that's entirely fair. As for these two kits right here, the fact that I'm not going to be using them, it, I don't want them to go to waste. They are not the greatest of, of 3D printers, but I do believe that they could be of more use to someone who wants them or who has better use for them or has the time to actually spend and tinkering with them. So. For that reason, I've decided to give these two printers to my Patreons. And I did a little giveaway and two of my Patreons have now been chosen and they will be sent these two printers after I assemble them and try to put everything um, in a box. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more information on these two printers or if you are adventurous enough to want these two printers, I'll leave links in the video description. In the meantime, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank my absolutely awesome patrons for their very generous support. I want to thank Filamenta for sponsoring this episode. As always, leave a comment. If you have any questions, like, share, subscribe. And as always, happy making, guys.